Hello, welcome to my video on an Aspire Post Processor. Please visit my Facebook group CNC Wood Carving UK and post questions or feedback, thank you. I have decided to make a video manual as in my experience no one ever reads a written manual, therefore this video will be rather long, as by the time I finished creating this post processor it ended up with far more functions and options than I started out with. So far this post has been used on my small Umiac X6-1500 GT USB CNC, and two professional CNCs with auto tool changing units. Have you ever wished there were more options available on the Save Tool Path tab? After many problems I came up with a solution, then after a few friends used it, they asked if I can add another function, then another. So let's get started, switch to the Tool Paths tab. Let's look at the material setup, I shall go into this far more later. Close and open Preview Tool Paths, then click Preview All Tool Paths. At this stage please save preview image. You will need this image later, close window. Select the post processor you wish, and select all the tool paths you want to export to a G-code file. Click save tool path, S, select the output folder, and you will be shown a dialog box with all the options available. Output, you can see the output will be in metric. Program number, is assigned so as you can keep track of the latest compile you have done, also it can be used in a database, where you can store all the job information for later, you can overwrite this if you wish. Program file name, you can use this as a short title, you can change it if you wish. Data settings. Auto numbering. Personally I only have a small 370x570x60cnc, however, two of my friends have professional size machines, and have often complained of the lack or missing functions, so my first task was to renumber the tools, but not reposition them, so on the dialog you are given a choice of three. Renumber, no. This option will not renumber your tool list. Renumber, yes, this option will renumber your tool list, but not sort them. Renumber, auto, this is the one everyone loves, it sorts them, and removes the duplicate tools. If you look carefully you will see that the first tool, tool 101, have become, tool 1. You will also see, tool 101, is used three times, this is very common in an industrial environment, in the program, this is not unusual, however when you have an auto tool changer, it's a problem, so option 3 is the answer, the CNC when finished with tool 1, 101, it will then continue until it needs, tool 101, again so will pick, tool 1. If you look carefully you will see that I have used several tools twice or so. In order to stop the screen of doom, I have reorganized the way I have my tools in the tool database, it's one of the things I brought from my time in industry. I have been told this is one of the best things with my post processor, till they see the rest. Many may not like or use this, but I have found it useful as I have reorganized my tool database. However, even if you do not use this post processor, it's good practice to number your tools in this way. I have limited the values to 10, as I do not think more will be needed, however, if you have 25 and mills perhaps 150 will suffice. My friends with auto tool changers love this, as it saves them renumbering the tools in their G-code programs every time they have a new job. Data sheet, the data sheet within Aspire is fine for non-professionals, it's not what is best in industry, 
my friends gave me a lot of hassle over this they wanted this, the other wanted that, in the end I made the decision to go with this, you can choose whether to have one or not, some jobs do not need one. Unfortunately one problem I had was not being able to export an image from the post processor, and is a big problem, as it makes my work look sloppy. The second problem with images is within the tiling, output, but that will be covered later. Tool macro, both my friends insisted on something to automatically set tools into Mach 3, this was not easy, finally I found with a Mach 3 macro, M22P. I could achieve almost floorless results, of cause there is a manual method, which I shall demonstrate later. Tiling toolpath, this is a complete video all by itself, which will be a subject to a video I shall do later. Changing this will make no difference, it is only there to tell you, you're using tiling mode. Drawing rotation, as someone who only has a small CNC, 370x570, I find this very useful, it allows me to draw my job in a spire as I wish it to look, then output it at either 0 degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees or any angle you like. Of cause most of the time you will only use 0 degrees or 90 degrees. Work coordinate settings, many may not understand this judging from the many posts I see in many Facebook groups, work coordinate settings, can be very useful in conjunction with machine zero, and homing switches, they enable you to have fixed points on your CNC as preset datums. I use mine as you can see on this sketch, it saves many hours setting the X and Y datums. Exact stop slash constant velocity mode, in Mach 3, along with many other controllers, when it encounters AG61 in the code, the CNC will come to an exact stop, after every line of code, this will make the CNC jerk and jump around a lot, AG64 will place the CNC into constant velocity mode, this causes the CNC to work a little harder, and in conjunction with the look ahead function, will make everything work smooth. When using G64 and look ahead, the controller will gradually slow as it comes to a corner, then speeds up as it continues. This of cause adds a little time to the cycle time, however work finish is usually much better, it also increases the life of your CNC. XY Home Position Mode Machine 0 G53, will send your spindle to where you set your machine 0 to be, either with home switches by pressing ref all home, or to somewhere where you switched your CNC on, and you pressed ref all home. Return G28, will send your spindle to where you set the G28 position in Mach 3. XY home and end position, this can be set in two ways, one from within a spire, using the material setup, of cause if you're like me you always forget. Two by editing the values in the boxes. G53Z0. Yes, this will raise the spindle up to the Z machine 0, at the end of each tool, and at the end of the job. No, this will raise the spindle up to the value you have set in Aspire, using the material setup. Okay, when pressed will appear to do nothing, except close the window, however if you look in the directory you gave, you will see several files. .html document, is your work or data sheet, it will open up in your chosen web browser. .cnc file is your G-code program. .m1s file is the tools used in a form that can be used to load into Mach 3. .crv3d file is your drawing. .jpg files are images you have saved, which can be used in your data sheets. Cancel, will close the window, and add am30 to the start of the .cnc code. Unfortunately there is no way to stop output of the G-code file once this process has started. Information, this will bring up another dialog window with some helpful information. Please read, this will open a .pdf containing the text from this commentary, with pictures. The Vectric button will take you to the Vectric web page. 
The Mach 3 backslash 4 button will take you to the home of Mach 3 backslash 4 newfangled solutions. The CNC wood carving button will take you to my Facebook group page. The information button. This will open a short explanation sheet of the post processor dialog. The please red button is the text you are hearing in a .pdf file. Let's open the data sheet or worksheet. This is full of information the center may need. It's best you just take time to see what's what. Most is self-explanatory. Let's play with the image, open it up in paint. Select what you need, and using the crop tool, discard what you don't want. Now save the image. And when you refresh the web page the image changes. Using this method you have almost total control over what you see. Just in case you cannot see the image clearly, or you wish to see it in greater detail, click the open image button, you can enlarge it a little to show more detail. Tool Macro Let's have a look at this macro, double click it and it will open in your text editor of your choice. I recommend Notepad++, it can be configured to highlight certain blocks of text, and makes reading G-code much easier. The text you see looks messy, it is formatted in Mac 3 macro language. Line 1, this is a remark, and is only there for the human, the machine just ignores it. Line 2, set tool desk, this is a macro command, it tells Mach 3 to enter end mil 5 millimeters, into tool list 1. This is of cause the tool description, and is there so as the operator knows which tool is which, just in case it needs replacing. Line 3, set tool broom, this is a macro command, it tells Mach 3 to enter 5.0, into tool 1, tool radii. If we wanted to add the tool length, we would use, set tool broom, 1 comma 2 comma 56.28, this tells Mach 3 to enter 56.28 into tool 1, tool length, and so on. Open Mach 3. Select config on the menu, and click tool table, you will see all the tools are empty, close the window. Select operator, on the menu, and click VB script editor, what looks like a text editor opens, it is in fact where you can tell Mach 3 to run many commands, like the tool change macro, but here we only want to enter the tool data which is in our macro, so let's load it, once loaded, press the single green arrow, then close the window, this is not the time to go into macro programming. Now select config on the menu, and click tool table, you will see all the tools have been entered. Close the window and you're set to go.
if we wanted to add the tool length, we would use set tool broom 1 comma 2 comma 56.28. This tells Mach 3 to enter 56.28 into tool 1, tool length 